On this video, we're going to answer the question, how fast? Which is a big part of physics, discussing the speed of something or the velocity of something. Both very similar concepts, but as you'll find out, um, they are two different things. Now let's suppose you are uh, filming two runners uh, racing in the park. Um, we have We'll describe these runners as the uh, runner in the red shorts and the runner in the blue shorts. Let's say that each of these three frames was taken at three equal time intervals. Which one of these three will have the greatest displacement during that time interval? Which one of these two, rather? It, it would be the girl in the red shorts because she starts behind the man in the blue shorts ends up passing him and actually goes beyond the tree. So let's just make a simple position time graph for this situation. Uh, I'm going to put both runners on the same plot. Uh, so we've got, we always want to put our independent variable, the time, on the x-axis and our dependent variable, the position on the y-axis. Um, so let's say each of these frames is a second. And we'll say that uh, we'll call the right end of the bench the origin, uh, meaning that if the bench was turned around, we'll call this the origin, the part that I circled. To us, that would be the left end of the bench. So, get a red marker. We'll say that the girl in the red shorts starts pretty much at the origin. After one second, she is, we'll say, somewhere in this region. We're just estimating right now. And after two seconds, we'll say she is about right here. Now for the blue shorts. He actually starts a little bit ahead of the origin, so we're going to put him starting right here. He's roughly at the same spot as the girl at one second, maybe a little bit behind her, so we're going to put him right here, and we're going to put the at the two second mark, he's now behind the girl. So we'll put him right there. So let's make a best fit line for the blue shorts and extend it. And the red shorts and extend it. Okay. Now let's just give uh, some values, some values to these. Let's make this um, one meter. We'll make this uh, two meters. We'll make this three meters. Okay. I'll get back to my mouse here. Now, if we go back to our position time graph, what do you notice about the slopes of the two runners? Who has the steeper slope? It's the runner in the red shorts. Uh, obviously the runner in the red shorts is moving faster because she passed the runner in the blue shorts. So there is some correlation between the slope and the speed of the runner. Now let's just look at how to calculate that speed or velocity. 
I will use them interchangeably for now. But how would I calculate the slope of this line? I'd want to take the rise over the run. Um, so let's just calculate the slope of the red runner first. Uh, she goes from about three, a final position of three meters from an initial position of one meter. Uh, that's her delta, that's her change in y or her rise. The run goes from 0 to 2 seconds, so we'll say 2 seconds minus 0 seconds, which gives me 2 meters over 2 seconds. We're going to say her slope is equal to 1 meter over second, or 1 meter per second. The other slope for the blue runner is going to be the same idea. We'll take about 1.8 meters minus the 1 meter over 2 seconds minus 0 seconds. Again, this is our rise, this is our run. We get about 0.8 meters over Again, two seconds, which is going to be about 0.4 meters per second. Uh, these are actually very slow values for the runners, but I was just making up values. Um, go to the next slide. What we can infer from this uh, using the graph is that the average velocity, we can actually define this. And to this bar right here is another way of saying average. Um, the reason this average is it's not instantaneous, which we'll talk about later. Um, the average velocity is actually equal to the change in position because your rise is how much your position changes over your change in time. So this is your delta y, this is your delta x, which is also your change in position and your change in time. Those are all the same deal in this situation. So your average velocity ends up being your rise over your run or your average, your change in distance over your change in time. Now, I said velocity and speed aren't quite interchangeable. What I mean by that, the velocity is actually both the speed and direction. So the actual value you get for the um, velocity is going to be your speed as well. Um, it's the sign that tells you the direction of the motion. If I have a positive slope, I'm going to have a positive velocity. If I have a negative slope, I'm going to have a negative velocity. The speed is only the value of that slope. So say this is a slope of 5. Velocity would be 5. Speed would be 5. Let's say this is a slope of negative 5. Velocity would be negative 5, but speed would still be 5. So we take the absolute value of that, and it would be 5. Again, the direction is determined by the sign. So let's just look at some sample problems. What is a skateboarder's average velocity and average speed? Well, velocity is going to be, let's just look at two points that are actually reasonable to estimate. We'll go with this point since it's almost on the line. The crossbars there, and this point's almost on the crossbars. Um, so we want to take the change in distance over the change in time. 
My change in distance in this little interval is from here to here, which is 9 minus 3. My change in time is from here to here, which is 5 minus 2. My velocity ends up being 6 meters over 3 seconds, which is 2 meters per second. That also happens to be my speed because the absolute value of 2 is still just 2. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Hopefully you receive some, uh, an answer of something like 0.67 kilometers per minute for both your speed and velocity. And you realize that the motion is starting at the origin and moving at a constant speed forward at that rate of um, speed. All right, so the speed and direction at a particular instant is called the instantaneous velocity. Like I said, we don't know exactly um, what happens between the points we plot. So say that we know this, that, this value, this value, this value, this value, and this value. And what we did was we calculated this best fit green line between those uh, data points we have. We don't particularly know what happened right here. We don't know necessarily what happened at 12 seconds, but we can infer from our best fit line that the speed was about this slope and our position was about where I drew the dot. Um, so the, the instantaneous velocity is basically what you would see on your speedometer as you are driving. Um, the average velocity would be taking into account your entire trip distance divided by your entire trip's time. Um, and again, the instantaneous velocity is uh, basically if you were to shrink your change in distance to zero, and if you were to shrink your change in time to zero, which is not possible because everything takes a minuscule amount of time, but that would be the ideal definition of instantaneous velocity. Finally, let's just look at an equation we can re represent the motion with. Uh, if you recall, the slope of a line is y equals mx plus b. We can actually fit each of those variables into our line here. Um, so let's look at this example right here. We said our slope was, uh, we've got a slope of, 10 kilometers over 15 minutes and we said that was our speed at 6.67 kilometers per minute. Now that helps us get our slope. If we um, look at our y-intercept we know that that is the point at which we are at our origin. In other words, we're going to call that our initial distance. And we know that the slope is our speed. Um, the other two values we have might be a little bit trickier to figure out because they are both uh, changing. But if you look at what is changing with y, 
and what is changing with x, it makes more sense because y is our axis here, the position, and um, x is our, value, our axis here, the time. So what we can actually say here is that the distance at any point in time is a function of um, this t of the uh, time itself and we, it can be found by using the slope of the velocity and the initial point you are at uh, which a lot of times is going to be right at our origin or zero um, so this will tell us any distance any um, position at a particular time just like a linear function is meant to do so now you have several ways of representing it. You have um, motion diagrams. You have uh, graphs um, of position versus time. You have words to describe. And you have an equation all in your toolbox, all different ways of describing motion. Finally, just a couple of review questions. See if you can rank these position time graphs according to their average speed. You should have gotten that the highest average speed is going to be based, these are all based on the slope. So A's slope is uh, over it goes over one and down two it's actually negative one half B slope is going over one two up three so two thirds C slope is moving over 2 down 2 so 1 and B slope is over 1 2 3 4 5 four. over 5 up 4 so remember speed we're just looking at absolute value so clearly um, D has the greatest or I'm sorry yeah D has the greatest followed by C, followed by B, followed by A. So D, C, D, A. Now let's look at average velocity um, on the next one. In this one, we're just going to look at the actual values rather than the magnitudes. So if we go back, it's going to be, um, once again, A having the lowest velocity and uh, the rankings would essentially be the same in this case. That's all I have for our lesson on velocity. Um, next, we will go into discussing uh, acceleration and motion in two dimensions.